Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to version 2 of C++ Crash Course. In this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about likely and unlikely attributes um, that are available in GCC 9. Before we begin, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what these attributes are. So attributes provide a unified standard syntax for implementation defined language extensions. So different compilers have different language extensions in order to say, uh, allow the programmer to give hints to the compiler. And a lot of times these are things for like code scheduling. So we can give code scheduling hints, but different compilers will implement these different ways and extend the language in different ways. So now we've got a problem. We've got some optimizations that become non-portable because they rely on a particular compiler. So uh, likely and unlikely are examples of this, and we can use these um, um, attributes to basically get rid of these, um, uh, these implementation-defined extensions, and we can use a, this unified syntax. So what the, these attributes are, likely and unlikely, they allow the compiler to optimize for the case where paths of execution, uh, including that statement, are more or less likely than alternative path. So we're going to be taking a look at these with something like an if statement. So you know, we may know something about our data and we may know ahead of time which uh, path, say maybe the if case or the else case, we may know which one is more likely than the other. So it may make sense to tell the compiler about this and to you know, give a hint saying to prioritize one of these paths. Now it's important to note that this can be a dangerous optimization mainly because uh, it can cause se severe performance uh, loss if you give a bad hint. So this is something that should be used sparingly and only if you really know something about your code and maybe your input data. Uh, so let's go ahead and begin and we're going to be taking a look at an example that was featured in our C++ Crash Course series called Fast Mod. So we'll go ahead and open up this code. And what we're going to be doing is benchmarking uh, the modulo operation and seeing if we can make it any faster. So here uh, we're going to be you know, doing modulo on a uniform random distribution of data from 0 to 255. And we're going to be testing out different sizes of vectors from size 16 to size 1024 with different modulo values. So mod 32, mod 128, and mod 224. Now these were chosen specifically because they show up different cases. With mod 32, most of our input data is going to fall above the number we're doing modulo by. With 128, it's about half and half. And with 224, most of the numbers will fall below our modulo number. Now this is important because with modulo, it's really just the remainder from division. If we have a number smaller than uh, the modulo, um, so say you know 10 modulo 15, uh, the answer to that is just 10, right? So we don't actually need to do uh, modulo. And because modulo is really just you know part of division, division is a pretty expensive operation. So if we can maybe skip doing modulo in certain cases, we might be able to get some performance improvement. So that's what we're going to be benchmarking here. So in our baseline benchmark, we're just going to be doing modulo on every single piece of our input data. And that's this uniform random distribution here. Now for our fast mod case, we're going to add some additional complexity. So we're going to add a branch here with this if else. And what we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the input is greater than or equal to um, the ceiling or the number we're doing modulo by. If it's greater than or equal to, we have to do modulo. Um, but if it's not, right, if the number is less than the ceiling, we can go ahead and just store the input. So we can completely avoid doing this, uh, we can completely avoid doing this uh, division operation or this uh, modulo operation. So let's go ahead and just collect some you know, baseline data. Uh, so we'll go ahead and compile this with O3 optimization, so a high level of optimization. And so this will be our um, auto-generated uh, benchmarks here uh, for different input combinations. So here you see that we're you know, benchmarking for size 16, 64, 256, and 1024 vectors at our three different modulo points. And you see for our baseline one, it really doesn't matter what we're doing modulo by. The reason being is we're doing modulo on every single number. So that's not going to make a difference what we're doing modulo by. So for something like size 16, uh, they're all going to be 34 or 35 nanoseconds. But for the case for fast mod, fast mod is input data dependent because we have that conditional check in there. And we see that um, some surprising results in here. So even in the worst case, where most of the time we don't get to skip and we've, we've added an additional branch, it's still about the same performance as the, um, as the base mod case. So, you know, 35.8 uh, nanoseconds, 34 nanoseconds, 35.2, and for um, fast mod, 35.4 nanoseconds. So about the same. 
But once we start being able to skip more, say the uh, you know mod 128 case, it goes down to 20.2 nanoseconds, which is significantly faster than this 35 nanoseconds for the base mod. And if we look at the larger input sizes, so say uh, 1024 vectors, all of these take around 2200, 2300 nanoseconds. For fast mod, even the worst case only takes about you know 2100 nanoseconds. And the best case only takes about 874 nanoseconds, which is, you know, over two times faster than the base mod case. So this all goes back to our input data, right? We know most of the time we're going to be skipping the module operation. So if there was some way to maybe give a hint to our compiler to maybe even prioritize that side of the branch even more, we might be able to squeeze out some more performance. So we might know that we're doing mod 224 ahead of time. So this is a kind of spot where we do this optimization. So let's let's look at a non-portable way we can do this first. And first of all, let's let's actually look at what this what the underlying code looks like using perf. So we can use perf record to go ahead and just run you know one of the input cases. So let's run mod um, 224 um, with an input vector size of 1024 and then if I do perf report I can take a look at that inner loop right and this is where all my time is being spent and what we're really going to focus on is this idiv here so basically this idiv has been kind of prioritized and been you know scheduled up here first inside of this inner loop where we're going to be doing all of our um, when we're going to be doing all of our uh, comparisons um, you know, when we're doing this modular benchmark um, versus the other side where we're just storing the input value. So the div has been basically hoisted and put first. Um, so let's see what happens when we say give a compiler hint. So if we go ahead and go into fastmod.cpp, let's use a non-portable hint. So let's use one for GCC and we can use built-in expect, right? So this is what we can use to say, uh, give a hint about a particular branch. So if I use built-in expect and I say, okay, well, I know with mod 224, most of my data is going to be below the modulo. So this condition of input greater than or equal to ceiling should be false. So I can say uh, built-in expect this condition in zero here. So let's go ahead and recompile this. And we can go ahead and just run that benchmark again. And again, we're trying to beat 850 nanoseconds or so. So if we go ahead and run this with perf again, so we'll go ahead and do perf record. We see that we're going to end up getting uh, a slightly faster time. So instead of about 840 nanoseconds, now we're down to 670 nanoseconds. And let's go ahead and see what the report tells us about the code scheduling. So now we see that the division has been placed at a different spot. So the div is down here now, and we're basically prioritizing the path where we're just doing the skipping now, right? So we're prioritizing this path where we do the comparison and it ends up being uh, less than, so we can just store whatever the input is. That's what's being prioritized now. So just a little bit of different code scheduling here, and we get a pretty significant performance boost. So let's see a more portable way we can do this now. So instead of using built-in expect, so let's get rid of this, I can just add the attribute unlikely. So basically saying that it's unlikely that this resolves true. So um, this is basically prioritizing our else statement. So I've given the uh, attribute unlikely here, and I can go ahead and recompile fast mod. Uh, I don't have to use built-in expect anymore, and we can go ahead and use perf um, to go ahead and record that time. And again, it was 840 nanoseconds or so for the um, um, for the, that baseline case, 672 or 670 nanoseconds when we did that built-in expect. And now we see about 630, so pretty close to the same time, maybe even a little faster, when we just gave it the attribute of unlikely there. So let's go ahead and do perf report, and we'll take a look at it. And again, you see that the div has been um, basically shoved down further and we're prioritizing um, the other branch again, basically the branch where we're, um, we're just storing whatever the input data is. But now we have it in a more portable way where we're using these attributes rather than um, an implementation defined language extension. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Check out the C++ Crash Course video for more information and where we dive a little bit deeper into the assembly. Um, for this example, this uh, really came from CPPCon, uh, a talk from Chandler Carruth, who basically gave the original version of this example. Um, as always, all this code can be found at github.com slash coffeebeforearch. 
So here from the uh, front page here you can see C++ 20 samples, um, condition attributes, and you can use this fast mod. And you can do things like test you know, using likely versus unlikely and seeing the performance differences in this benchmark. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.